in the previous uh, session, uh, we were uh, looking at what is called as a binary classification, right? So basically, the binary classification is nothing but the problems which require uh, only one output node because, right, uh, you have only two classes, right? Binary represents uh, base two, so zero and one, right? So if at all we have the training data like this, like the two classes represented by delta and uh, say a circle, right? So if you have two classes like this, uh, then in order to uh, build an ANN of this, we have number of input nodes represented by the number of uh, input parameters and you can assume the hidden nodes equal to the number of data points and you can get an output node depending upon how many uh, classes you have. So if you have two classes, just one class is enough. Just one, uh, what you call, neuron at the output layer is enough, right? So we update the output uh, values instead, instead of uh, representing by using uh, some of the shapes, you, you will replace it by, uh, say, the numbers, right? By the digits, zeros and ones. And then we saw what are the procedures, right? Or what are the steps to be followed in the procedure? So this is what uh, is called as a binary classifier. Okay, now uh, let us move on to the uh, next topic. Uh, this uh, is called as the multi-class classification. Right, so the, the idea behind multi-class is that you are going to have many classes, right, and uh, you try to make a classification and the output nodes will not be equal to one because you have many classes, all right? So because of that, uh, now, next topic, just write, I'll just write the site as well, as multi-class, classification right so this uh, in this particular uh, section we are going to utilize the neural network to deal with the classification of more number of classes so here the artificial neural networks uh, ANNs deal with the classification of at least three, okay? So three or more classes, right? So let us try to uh, represent our uh, problem now uh, in the form of a diagram. This is again an example, right? Uh, the coordinates are not decided, but uh, simply we will plot, right? So let us consider a data set which has uh, three classes, right? So x, y coordinates have been plotted. And in order to identify the classes, we give different shapes. Okay, so let us just uh, see how to uh, plot such a class. Okay, so this is the one, right? Consider this uh, diagram, wherein we can see the data has three different classes, right? So now in order to uh, start the problem and in order to make the neural network to classify, I have to select or construct the neural network first, which is capable of uh, what you call classifying this. Right, so I just have to uh, decide what should be the ideal architecture of the neural network that I'm going to use so that this can classify, right? So, uh, how many input nodes are required, right? So we can decide that. So the input nodes are two, right? It at the input layer because how many uh, coordinates you have for the input data, Two, right? So x and y coordinate. Every point on this graph has two coordinate values, x and y. 
uh, we were looking at uh, the multi class classification and uh, one such example is that uh, whenever you have the number of classes more than 3 or more than or equal to 3 that falls under what is called as a multi class classification right so right uh, let us take an example uh, which you can see on the screen now it has three different classes right so we have various x and y values but uh, they are uh, they, have, they belong to different classes the number of classes here equal to 3 because uh, each class uh, the data points belonging to each of the class uh, they have been right represented by different shapes like circle the square and triangle all right so uh, the idea here is that we want to design the neural network now which is capable of classifying this right so uh, in order to design such a neural network first we need to decide the number of nodes of input layer right so there are uh, three classes right three classes so what we do now we will decide the number of input nodes right so this means the input layer has how many nodes two nodes right this is because the input value has two parameters two parameters x comma y uh, you can call uh, x and y coordinates right x comma y coordinates of this right so let us say we want to keep it as simple as possible right uh, the hidden layers right are not required this time right uh, let us try to uh, determine the number of output nodes as well okay so you see when when you increase the number of output nodes right there may not be a necessity of uh, what you call the hidden layers again this is you you can uh, conclude this only after doing some experiments right what happens if i have one hidden layer and three output nodes and uh, what happens if i try to reduce the number of nodes or increase increase the number of hidden nodes and what is the effect right etc you can definitely uh, uh, do a trial and error on this right but since we don't have that much time now i'll directly come to the conclusion which we i came after right doing some experiment over here right so initially i thought there may be a requirement of hidden layer so i assume that okay i have say four to six data right uh, so I inserted six uh, nodes in the hidden layer and then I actually added the three output layers, three nodes in the output layer because I have three classes. Okay, but later I understood that when I did some trial and error, right, I tried to reduce the number of uh, uh, hidden layer neurons, then I tried to increase, then once I completely removed, right, even after removing it is able to classify because you see if I assume three uh, neurons in the output layer each one is capable of deciding its own classes right so you see you will see that right only three output layers are enough right i don't need any hidden layer again that actually simplifies your uh, what you call uh, the neural network networks structure right it actually reduces that right so let me just write a point here right uh, two simplify the structure of a n n right uh, no layer is assumed 
right so you can actually put a hidden layer definitely that will classify but in this case since i am assuming more number of output neurons right output neuron is not one since there are multiple classes i have to make sure that there are more uh, neurons in the output layer right because of that i will directly use the uh, three neurons in the output layer itself okay so i remove the hidden layer for the time being and uh, then in order to decide the number of output nodes right matching i should always match the number of output nodes to the number of classes right so this is number of output nodes should be equal to the number of classes this is applicable whenever the number of classes more than or equal to 3 so in this case right i have to make sure that i need three new nodes right this implies three output nodes are required so let us uh, try to plot uh, such a neural network which classifies our data set uh, which is which has three different classes all right so my intention is simply to plot uh, to to show the design which we have assumed right under this condition So you can see that there are two input uh, nodes, three output nodes, and every node is connected to the every other node in the next layer. Right. So this is the configured neural network for the three classes which we have assumed. Right. Now you see, right, the three classes which we have assumed, the classification is represented in terms of shapes. Definitely, we know that we cannot follow the shapes and we cannot give the shapes to the machines right so i have to replace it by numbers only when you introduce the numbers over there it becomes easy for you to process right so what we do now right we uh, actually create the training data by replacing the shapes right we see replacing the shapes by numbers replace the shapes by numbers in the training data okay so let us try to uh, visualize that as well right again this is just an example not the exact data okay so let me show you uh, assumed uh, uh, data for this kind of classification so you can see the first data point has the values 5 comma 7 right so and you say this is class 1 right and there is another data which belongs to class 3 2 comma 4 belongs to class 2 and so on so how do you make sure that the class 1 is represented right i have three output neurons right whenever you uh, give input as the first class data first neuron has to fire right right first neuron is expected to give output value equal to one while the other two neurons give zeros at the output so the outputs are assumed in the following way right so let us try to consider the outputs right whenever a input of each of the class is given corresponding neuron has to fire right corresponding neuron has to generate the output Okay, so let me try to bring that over here. So you see the class one, first class is nothing but first neuron is firing. You can see this, the, the, there are three outputs now. Output is not just one, output is three. So first value is the output of the first neuron, second neuron is the second place, third neuron is at the third place. So it's very clear now that for a class one input data, whenever the input data points corresponding to the first class is given as input what we are expecting that the first neuron has to activate its output to one others other two will be at zero same thing is repeated but in a different way whenever you give the class two data right the second neuron fires you can see that zero one zero 
second one fires while the first and third right are still at zero and the uh, very similar fashion the third input data is given means what should happen the third neuron should fire right so output expected is 0 0 1 where first two zeros are the outputs of first two uh, nodes of the output layer and the one corresponds to the third node or the third neuron of the neural network so this is what we are expecting right i'll show you the uh, proper complete diagram so these were like partial uh, discussions as, uh, associated with our uh, problem definition so now i will show you the each output node is mapped to uh, each of the class okay let me show you that so this is what uh, i mean when i said like uh, corresponding to each of the class what is the output expected right so i'll just write one point over here to make things more clear so now we what we are trying to do here is that the each of the output node should be actually uh, we are trying to map should be mapped uh, to an element okay of the the class vector so when i say class vector this is what i mean so the outputs are assigned in this fashion when class 1 is the decision made by the neural network so the output will be 1 0 0 vertically right so 1 for the first nodes 0 for the second 0 for the third and class 2 corresponds to 0 1 0 class 3 corresponds to 0 0 1 and so right now you see previously we had designed our uh, right we replaced our shapes in the output that is that corresponds to each class we try to replace that with what the class names but class name again CLASS1, CLASS2, etc. is again, it's not going to be useful when we do the classification. So it has to be numbers as we know, right? So what we do now, uh, update your training data and uh, right, into, uh, update it into a new form, right? So let's try to update. Updating the the training data right what do you get so the new format of the training data looks like this now so i have to include the what you call as the class as well in the data set right so that brings us to the following format isn't it now so anyway, we understood what exactly is happening here. Now, so I have to decide what should be the activation function of each of the node, right? So I defined my training data. Data set is ready, but I need to look into what is what you call as the uh, value of or the activation function that I'm supposed to use so that there is a classification that is going to happen according to our need because when one of the input comes right only one of the neuron has to fire other two should be at a lower value right so let us see uh, how to decide that once the training data is ready our next uh, objective is to write uh, to define the output layer activation function so i know something about my correct outputs right so correct correct outputs of the transformed training data is going to range from 0 to 1 so this is my first point which i understand from the requirement 
right so output range from 0 to 1 right so can we just define and use the sigmoid function as we did in the binary class this is the first question right so normally what happens is uh, whenever we are trying to define a multi class classifier right the soft max function is going to be used as an activation function of the output node right so right as now the question is uh, what happens with the sigmoid function all right so let's let's, let's uh, just check that <laughs> So, uh, activation function that we have discussed so far, including the sigmoid function, normally they account only for the weighted sum of the inputs, correct? And they basically do not consider the output from the other uh, output nodes, okay? So, this is the idea, right? Uh, whatever activation function we have used, like uh, the sigmoid function, current nodes output will be applied to calculate the output of the activation function like sigma of v is equal to right i know that right it is 1 divided by 1 minus 1 plus e to the power minus v so the v value will be used to calculate the output but now you see when i now now my requirement is slightly modified it is something like only one of the output should be high other two should be definitely low there is no question that you get 110 as your output right that that should not be a case at all so in order to get that kind of response the idea is that you try to bring an activation function uh, which actually takes care of the other two nodes output as well to decide the current output of a node so if you try to implement that it becomes easier for us to bring only one of the neurons firing other two neurons right not firing are you, are you getting the point right uh, we have to get only one neuron firing other two neurons are not firing so for this if you simply use the soft uh, sorry the what you call as the uh, sigmoid function right that may not be uh, capable of doing this job because it might fire two of the neurons right so because the that particular activation function does not take care of what is the value of the other two nodes output when you decide the output of a current node but that's not going to work now it has to be right the decision has to be taken right depending upon what is the value of other two nodes as well right so for that reason let me let me write one point over here right so this is a characteristic of a softmax not softmax sorry sigmoid right so the one which we use was sigmoid right uh, the sigmoid activation function accounts only the weighted sums of inputs okay to decide output right and they do not consider the other node outputs right but let's go for another function now now we are trying to use a different uh, activation function so uh, let's bring in so this is the problem with the we are trying to we are facing with the sigmoid function so we want to replace it we don't want this to happen because our output is like 100 or 010 or 001 in order to get that right uh, kind of re response from the output layer of the neural network we need to bring what is called as a softmax function in the output okay 
So let us define what is called as a soft match. All right. So the soft match uh, activation function accounts not only the weighted sum of the inputs but also the inputs to the other right output nodes. You are going to consider that as well. All right. So the soft match activation function. So this is a special function which uh, accounts. the weighted sum of inputs the inputs as as well as as well as the inputs of other output nodes Right, let's take an example. Right, for some reason, let us assume that we got the V value that is the partial output of the output node in this fashion. Let me assume, like, right? so I got 2, 1, and 0 0.1. Okay, so where is this? Right, where exactly is this thing happening? Where is the V value? I'll go back to the diagram to show you. Right, so this V value, what I assumed as 2, uh, 2, 1, 0 0.1 is, is here, right? So the, maybe one of, one of them, uh, sorry, the partial output that I'm getting over here, right? I'm assuming that this is going to give you a value of 2. It's a partial, not the final output, right? I still have to apply the activation function. Before the activation function, the partial output, 2, 1, 0 right, is the V value of the output node. All right, so this is what I assume. Next step, uh, what I want to do, I want to define the activation function. So this is what I'm going to give it as input to the activation function. Let me say that is the phi of V is equal to, let me try to define, right? If you have two in the first layer, sorry, two in the first neuron, two is the, output of the first neuron, right? So what happens, I'll try to write, this is e to the power that value 2 divided by the sum of all the terms e to the power, like e square plus e to the 1 plus e to the 0 0.1, right? Now you see, this is the current value and this is the, uh, all the three values. We are considering all the three, in the sense the outputs of other nodes are also being, can being considered over here. This is what we expected, right? So if you look at the uh, sigmoid, it was simply simply like 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power minus 2. Only this was the case, right? You used to consider like this. This never, take, this never took care of what is the value of the output of any other node that is present on the same layer, right? That was a problem, right? So now we try to eliminate that by uh, bringing up what you call as uh, the soft max activation function. Okay, that looks like this. This is the format. Now I'll write this uh, for all the three nodes, and this is how it's going to look like. This is the first output. All right. So let me write the second uh, value. Right. That is, the second node has an output of one. So this is e to the one divided by denominator remains same. So e squared plus e to the 1 plus e to the 0 0.1. Now calculate the third one. So that is e to the 0 0.1 divided by e squared plus e to the 1 plus e to the 0 0.1. All the three will have, right, the very similar kind. Okay, now you see the calculation. Let's do the calculation using a calculator and come back with answer. So the first term e squared so the whole divide, divided by uh, bracket e square plus e to the 1 plus e to the 0. 
Okay, so that uh, means so uh, its value comes to be approximately zero point six five nine zero. All right, so that's the first value, and let's look at the next one. So the second uh, value will be. 0 0.2424 and uh, the third value 0 0.0986 so now it's very clear that what is the use of softmax function right so if at all you use the uh, what you call sigmoid instead of the softmax for this above uh, set of inputs like 2 1 and 0 0.1 the output of a sigmoid function would have been 1 1 1 okay so that's a problem you can calculate and you can verify this right the output will be 1 1 1 that's a problem we have we don't have a, the expected output to be 1 1 1 for any of the classes right so all the three classes had like either 100, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, or 0. Now you can see that this can be actually approximated. If you set 0 0.5 as a threshold, the, the first sample will generate 1. This is going to generate a 0. This is going to generate a 0. So you can see that 100 0 is right closely visible over here. <clears throat> but that is not a case if you use uh, the other function that is called as the sigmoid function. So right definitely it looks like an advantage for us whenever we want such outputs right always go for the softmax instead of the sigmoid so now we introduce a different type of activation function as well and we also understood what is the use what is the necessity of that okay now what are the characteristics of softmax let's look at that uh, for, for the next five minutes all right so the basically we understood that the softmax function maintains the sum of the output values right to be one and uh, also limits individual outputs to be within a range 0 to 1 right it, this is what is going to happen right so the softmax function It tries to maintain it maintains the sum of the output values to be one. What do you mean by that? Add these three, right? Just check 0 0.6590, 0 0.2424, 0 0.0986 is approximately is equal to 1. Like it's 0 0.999 something, right? So it, it actually, we had truncated the values, right? Uh, to only four decimal uh, points over here. But if you extend this further, right? Uh, to maybe six or eight decimal places, uh, the sum will come to 1, okay? So that's what is the meaning of this softmax function right it tries to uh, uh, maintain the sum of the output values to be equal to 1 this is one characteristic of the softmax and also limits the individual outputs within 0 to 1 you can see all the individual outputs over here right that is actually between 0 and 1 all right so the same function it also limits the the individual outputs to be between 0 to 1. You don't have any value less than 0 or more than 1 for this. All right. So basically, it means that it accounts for the relative magnitudes of all outputs. The softmax is very much suitable for multi uh, class classification of the neural network so that's why that's what is a very important point to remember right so i can write as it 
accounts for a relative magnitude. of all the outputs right so this means right uh, i can write softmax is best suited for the multi class multi class classification by artificial neural networks okay so let us try to write a general uh, equation right so the general equation when i have n different nodes present Okay, so the yi, this is the output of the ith node is nothing but the phi of vi. How do you calculate? e to the power vi divided by, right? Let me assume that in this output layer, I have m neurons. So this has to be e to the v1 plus e to the v2 plus all the terms up to the last term that is e to the vn. So give a more generalized format that is e to the vi divided by summation k is equal to 1 to m this is e to the vk right that is the output so that's the most general equation where vi is the weighted sum of the output ith output node let me write that so vi basically represents the the weighted sum of ith output node right so m represents the total number of nodes or neurons neurons in the output layer right now okay activation function is fine what is the next objective right so you see so far what we did we actually have uh, uh, for a given problem right we decided right what is the network architecture right so we assume that there is input layer and there is output layer that is sufficient right because the output layer has sufficiently large number of nodes so the hidden layer is not required this is what we assumed but definitely you can put a hidden layer if you need right so for simplicity we eliminated the hidden nodes in this particular case then the as a second step we decided uh, what should be the activation function right this is very important because we had a specific output pattern right only one of the neuron is going to fire corresponding to the output right so for that reason we shifted from uh, what is called as a sigmoid function into a softmax function we looked at the advantages and how this can give generate the outputs as we require Right? So it's going to consider each and every outputs right, uh, of the, all the uh, neurons present in the layer before it makes a decision about the current output. Okay, So then uh, now the third objective is the learning rule. Which one I should select? Right, I have many rules to, that can be used. So let's go for them. Right? So this is to... to determine the learning rule
right so uh, we already uh, have understood that right it is a multi class classification right so out of all the learning rules and its improvements we have considered so far right the cross entropy one was the best right so definitely the multi class classification neural networks should employ the cross entropy driven learning rules right just like the binary classification we did so that's the important one let's try to use the best one we know so far right so i'll write all the multi class classification artificial neural network uses the cross entropy based learning rules right because uh, what's the advantage we already know that i'll simply write the advantage directly we know that there is a very good learning performance if you look at the performance curve that we had plotted in the previous session like the comparison of errors right with the ce and without ce if you compare the cross entropy is going to be the best it learns very quickly with very less number of iterations or epochs it's going to achieve a very good learning rate that's that's what is the meaning of very good learning performance and it's also pretty simple right nothing very complicated there is there's is no complicated calculation that's happening over here so uh, the i can add up a point here like simplicity okay of the cross entropy function okay now uh, let's write the general rules to be followed okay uh, this is the general idea right so if at all i want to go for uh, what you call as uh, that I, I want to train the multi class uh, neural network, right? Uh, the steps to be followed. Okay. Uh, the training steps for multi class ANN. So multi-class ANN refers to the classification of uh, multiple classes by a neural network. All right. So let's see what we have done so far. I'm trying to write it in a in the step-by-step -step fashion so that it becomes easy for us to follow. Okay. So the step number one here is I want to construct the output modes to have the same value as the number of classes. So look at the example, there were three classes, so we assumed three output modes, right? So then define the softmax, right? Activation function. All right, so this is my first step, okay. Let me move further. In the step number two, what we did, switch the names of the classes into a numerical vector. Okay, 
So this will be the step number two. Switch the names of the classes into numeric vectors right so you see that the one which we already have used like class one is 100 zero zero, class two is zero one zero class three is zero zero one etc right so only one of the class is uh, one, only one of the value is one all the other values are zero this kind of representation is called as one hot encoding right so i'll write an example example this is called as one hot encoding like 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 0 etc right this is actually right the basic meaning of hot uh, sorry one hot encoding only one of them will be hot in the sense high okay All right then let's go to the third point so now onwards the steps will remain remain pretty much uh, same right so initialize step number 3 should be initialization of weights initialize weights of ANN. step number 4 is to enter the input from the training data. So I have a training data and then I select the input from that, right? Uh, and obtain the output y. So once you have the output, what, what you can calculate is output y, comma, calculate the error error is e right and the delta that is this of output node so we are very familiar with these steps so let me write the equations directly so e is equal to d minus y where d is the desired output and uh, the delta value has to be assigned as e right so this is what this is the ce technique right okay cost function then let's move further the step number five propagate this output delta backwards and calculate the deltas of all the hidden layers right propagate output delta backwards backwards to calculate delta values of all hidden nodes so this comes only if you assume a hidden node otherwise it's not there but i am trying to write the general uh, representation general steps okay so i have to use this so this is e of uh, the kth node has to be the w transpose into the delta right so delta of kth node can be calculated as the phi dash of v of that particular kth node into error of that kth node so this is the common so we repeat this step until we finish all the hidden nodes okay so hidden all the hidden nodes are completed then we'll move to the step number six so sixth step is that once you have the delta values you can calculate uh, the weight updation right so then update weights of the artificial neural network how do you do that Cal by calculating first wij the change in the weight of every layer that is alpha into the delta i 
into x j then the w i j equal to w i j which is the older value plus the delta w i j right so i just have to repeat these steps starting from the step number four right enter and input data and repeat all these steps so this has to be repeated so this is step number seven so i just have to repeat step number four to step number six okay for all input data every input data you just do this right once that is done go to the step number eight right repeat all these steps right that is repeat four to seven as many number of times as you want right or it is equal to the number of epochs you decide right so that neural network gets completely trained repeat four to seven until the ANN gets fully trained so this is the uh, these are the overall steps that we are going to use for the training of what is called as a uh, multi-layered uh, neural network for multiple classes